Chickens. Nice. Nothing is quite as refreshing as the idea of spring. While it is still only the beginning of March, in Crete it feels like spring comes early and Operation Liftoff is ready to try its hand once more at the Chain Futures Tournaments in Heraklion. Back in November, when Operation Liftoff was first launched, the official tournament hotel, as well as the surrounding areas, were preparing for major renovations. When we arrived this time, construction was in full swing and the streets as well as the boardwalk were a mess because of the work being done. Dirt and dust were in abundance and could be seen on the courts as well. Fortunately, one of the renovations that Litos Beach Hotel prioritized was the resurfacing of a few of the main courts as well as the construction of six clay courts which would be entirely dedicated to hosting the women's tournament which otherwise shared the hard courts last year. In the first round of qualifying of the Greece F1 Futures, Alex started his quest against the 25-year-old Vasilios Karipi of South Africa. Alex was quick to take the initiative, taking 4-1 leads in both the first and the second set, making good use of the forecourt. Karipi though would not let either set go without a fight and made multiple successful raids himself to the net, complicating Alex's task. Alex managed to keep Karipi at bay and passed his first test at the opening Futures Tournament of 2017 for Greece, 6-3-7-5. In the second round, Alex had a meeting with Charalampus Kapogianis, a member of the Greek Davis Cup team who held an ATP ranking of 15-46. In the first set, it appeared that Alex was up against the Great Wall of Greece, as Kapoganis made sure that if there were any errors, they wouldn't be coming from his racket. Kapoganis assisted Alex in giving himself a 6-1 beating in the first set. It was clear that Alex was going to have to make some adjustments if he was going to keep up with Kapogianis. Alex decided to reduce his errors by being more patient and choosing when to attack more carefully. This change in philosophy led to four successful breaks in the second set. Despite those four breaks, Kapuganis responded with five breaks of his own, and Alex's qualifying campaign officially went up in smoke in the second round, 6-1-7-5. Luckily for Alex, at this particular Futures Tournament, there was a pre-wildcard tournament for those of the qualifying draw who were defeated for the final round. The ultimate prize was a wild card into the main draw of next week's F2, a reward certainly worth fighting for. 32 players took part in the wild card tournament, and Alex won three matches to make it to the semi finals, where he had a duel with Great Britain's 19 year old Luke Oakley, who had an ATP ranking of 1468. 
Oakley came out razor sharp in the first set, and Alex was performing gymnastics just to make it to 6-2. But then, all of a sudden, the winds of change invited rains to interrupt the match. The match was postponed for four hours before picking up again later in the afternoon. Alex used the break to regroup and pump himself up to come back and steal the second set, 6-4 from Oakley. The battle concluded in a match tiebreaker in which Alex had four match points starting at 9-6 that were never realized. Oakley got away with the match 6-2, 4-6, 12-10. So the qualifying tournament didn't go as well as I wanted to, but I had a chance to redeem myself uh, uh, in the wildcard tournament that the official organized for this week. Uh, I went to semis, I had four match points against the first seed and the guy who qualified, and I just did some very amateur mistakes in that match and it didn't go as well as it should have. But uh, I'd like to thank the organizers for making this tournament possible because uh, I had match play, I was able to work on my game and to prepare myself for next week. So that's, that's positive. Nothing can stop me, I'm all the way.